Yes, sir. Tarzan in the house. His name is the real Tarzan. My man, the real Tarzan, came down. 24-year-old Michael Holston out on the water at night. With its scenes of charging rhinos, savage pygmies, and the great hunter. Tarzan. He's the king of the junkie. So today, I'm going to take you guys on a mental trip for the dart frog. There is over a hundred species of dart frog. Only a handful are going to be really, really poisonous. Today is going to be your Costa Rican green and black dart frog. Now that's probably your most common dart frog you're gonna see in captivity in your pet stores. I'm gonna give you guys some information. Now take it from someone that has been around the world. I've caught dart frogs in Hawaii where they're actually invasive. Um, we talked about that earlier in this episode. Um, scientists way back in the day in the 1930s, they introduced these dart frogs, not, not the green and black ones, but they introduced a species of dart frogs to help to try to control a mosquito population. Did it work? Who really knows? But Hawaii is home to dart frogs since 1930s. Almost, it's 2021, so it's almost been 100 years since then. About four years ago, I took my first trip to Hawaii, and as I'm walking up this waterfall in Manoa Falls, I look to my left, and what do I see? I see a little small, beautiful, colorific thing. I don't even know if colorific is a word, but that's the first thing that came to my mind. Um, I ran after it, I'm moving the leaves around, I pick them up, catch me a little dart frog. I had other experiences after that, flying over to Costa Rica, going out at night, moving some leaf litter around after a, night of, after a day of rain, and these guys are coming up, hanging out. It's awesome to see these guys in their natural habitats. Now, I've also seen them in Honduras, I've seen them in Belize, and also in Panama. Um, dart frogs are known to be native from Central America down to South America. In particular, this green and black dart frog is native to Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, and Northern Colombia. Scientific name, I'm probably gonna mess this up, but I'm gonna try my best. Dendrobrates auratus is the scientific name of the green and black dart frog. Now they're also called arrow frogs. Some cool Indians native to these areas catch these frogs and they rub the arrows or their darts let them dry, throw them in their little hacky sack in the back, and they shoot arrows or they shoot blow darts at these animals high up in the canopy to eat them. Natives don't hurt the frogs because they don't kill them. They let them go and they keep the process going because they know that they need those frogs to survive to catch big meals like tapirs and stuff like that. Now that we got the scientific name out of the way, we're gonna talk about their lifespan. In captivity, they can live up to 20 years. 20 years in captivity. But in a while, let's say 12 to 15 years. That's their lifespan. Babies hatch out and take about two weeks to hatch. From mom laying them to the whole process of them going in tadpoles takes three months after the hatching period. Two weeks as eggs, and then three months to get the tadpole stage. Now, dart frogs reach sexual maturity at the age of eight to 10 months old, where they're ready to reproduce. Eight to 10 months? Ready to reproduce. Now, I want you guys to know that I care about you guys learning about these animals. I always show you them, but now I really want to sit down and geek out like I was as a kid and show you guys these cool animals. I want you to know every fact, every detail. One of my favorite things to do is to read magazines. I'll take a wild crabs 
thing and I'll read that as well. I'll take a Nat Geo book and read that as well. I have done that my entire life. Now we're gonna go off, what do these guys eat? You can feed them pinhead crickets. That's probably the easiest thing to do if you have sub-adult or adult dart frogs. But what if you have a baby? What if you have a young juvenile growing up? You're gonna wanna feed this thing fruit flies, flightless fruit fly. Now, you guys ever leave some fruit out on your counter and it's been too long, it's been nasty? Those are the little flies that you're gonna be able to feed your frog. Now, they come in a fruit fly culture, a small little uh, clear cup with a bunch of strings in it and they have the food in the bottom. Uh, the flightless fruit fly is called the Drosophila melanogaster. That's the scientific name. I'm gonna try to write it out. I know I probably botched that. Lightless fruit fly. Are you gonna be able to get the most nutritious value, nutritious value for your dart frog in captivity just by feeding them flightless fruit flies? Absolutely not. How do you correct that? Pouched up, containerized calcium. Same thing with vitamins and minerals, it's like a dust. And as you get ready to feed your animal, you put it in a separate container, you dust it. I call it putting seasoning on it. Like if you're gonna fry a chicken or make a steak or make pasta, you know, you gotta you got put that salt bay touch of calcium and vitamins and minerals and nutrients on it so the dart frog can get the full range of nutrition. Now, it's always good to have a wide variety of diet for these animals in captivity. It's always the best. You're gonna wanna also have a bioactive terrarium or vivarium. That means you're gonna have live plants in there. The live plants is also great to introduce some springtails. Springtails are hexapods. A hexapod is basically like a, a, a microbivore. Um, a microbivore is a little small animal that feeds mainly on bacteria. Um, just like an insect has external eating, they eat things, uh, this hexapod, the springtail, has internal uh, chewing mechanisms, which means it's not an insect. Um, you can also introduce isopods, AKA roly polies. You ever be a kid outside and you pull back that water gutter, uh, little thing on the floor, and you see the little roly polies? That's an isopod. Um, those animals live in really swampy and uh, densely moisturized areas. Um, they're gonna be eating the roots and also gonna be eating the waste, breaking the waste down when your frog is going to the bathroom which in return helps the plants grow, it keeps the soil rich, it's a whole process going on. So they're mainly gonna be deep in the soil, they may come up every now and then if it gets a little too dry, but that's when your frog goes to town and eats those bad boys up. It's a cool little ecosystem you guys got going on inside your cage. Springtails. Isopods. AKA Roly Polies. Now, what is a microbivore? A microbivore is literally an animal that eats microbes. Think about it. Small little, they call it microfauna. Microfauna basically means small animals. All right? Now, I'm throwing out all these big words for you guys to go and write them down. Take a little quiz, a little trivia for you guys to understand what these things mean. Now, it's a whole ecosystem, just like the Indians grab the frog and use it, the same thing happens with the microfauna, the micro, the microbivores, they break down everything for them to eat. Now, um, how does a dart frog get its poison? Now, are they born with it and naturally? And no, they are not. They have to develop a toxicity by eating ants and other insects. Now, these ants in the wild eat the roots of plants and certain trees that grow, which make the ants poisonous. Also, other insects eat those ants, and the frogs eat those insects. It's a whole little life cycle that also helps the frog protect itself in the wild. If this little small frog that's colorful, green and black, purple and blue, I mean metallic greens, radiant reds, glowing blues, these animals are just glowing in this jungle. And there's tons of predators that would love to pick them off from birds bigger frogs, tarantulas, snakes, you name it. These animals are high risk because they're so tiny. Now, 
the dart frog family also has a tinier dart frog. These guys are also known as uh, uh, thumbnails. That's, they are literally the size of your thumbnail and they have room to move. Also, these frogs can be full grown and hang out on your fingertip. These guys are amongst the smallest vertebrates on earth. The world is filled with the most fascinating animals. Dart frogs are definitely up there on our list of cool animals to discover. We've talked about what they eat, we've talked about their scientific name, how long they live, where they live, what's next. How do you tell the difference between a male and female dart frog? Well, the cool word for you guys is sexual dimorphism. It lets you guys know that there is a difference between the male and the female. Now, the male sometimes is smaller than the female. The females are a lot larger and they also develop an arch on their back. That's how you can determine whether the males are females. If you cannot see the arch yet, males have profound toe pads in the front of their fingers. That's toe pads for males. And you have arched back for females. What's next? Let's talk about your captive care. How hot should you have your dart frog? It should never ever go over 80 degrees. If it goes over 80, 85, you could kill your frog. It's way too hot. It does not get that hot in the jungle. But you gotta think, these guys live beneath the canopy. You always wanna keep your humidity over 70%. You don't want it to drop below. You don't want your frog to dry out. There are super wet seasons and then super dry seasons. There could be a dry season of maybe three months, four months in the jungle. And after that, it rains every single day. That's your wet season. If you have female frogs together, those frogs can, the females will eat other females' frogs. Why is that? Survival of the fittest. You also don't want to have a deep water bowl inside their enclosure because sometimes the males will fight or the females will fight and they'll drown the other frog if the water's too deep. You want to make sure that they can't submerge each other fully for a long period of time. You guys learned enough stuff today. I've left out a few things. Comment down below a few things I left out. Of course, there's way more for you guys to learn, but I want you guys to get involved. Comment down below, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys find that I, that I missed. And if I said anything wrong, also guys, correct me, I'm here to learn as well too. Again, there's tons of frogs out there and I just happen to have one of the cooler species. I love you guys, thanks for tuning in. Smash that like button, share this video, dart frog care tips. I love you guys, stay tuned for more crazy episodes and also educational episodes. I love you guys, peace.